questions? Shaq, you're starting to tell back Saturday night? Um, probably. Uh, I know he, I know he misses the defensive side. Um, we just need more Shacks, but uh, you know he'll play some offense and he'll probably play some defense as well. You know that you, going into this game, everybody asked about altitude. And yeah, you got to get beyond that and everything. It kind of help you in the fourth quarter in general. You got some, you got some non-offensive scores. You ran very few offensive plays. You think that helped the team a little bit towards the end of the game to stay strong? I, I think any time you get big plays, wherever they can come from, really gives us energy. It was really nice to get something done on special teams. We felt we've been so close all year. We've got some things done, but we've really been frustrated with um, a little bit of ourselves, maybe some of the penalties that have been called. And we've known we've been very, very close and finally got one done. It's always good to score on defense. Those guys are you know, doing a tremendous job of not only getting turnovers, but scoring. Shaq, going to play on, on both sides, like, like you said. How challenging do you think that'll be to this week coming up with the plan for it? And, and you know, it's always, it's always challenging. Um, you know, you just, you know, I, I don't know if it can be done where you put a guy and he's just going to play, uh, you know, both ways. So we got to kind of pick and choose our spots and, and uh, you know, figure it out, not make it too complicated in terms of what we're going to do and not overwhelm him. And, and uh, kind of go from there. Does having him have a four or five carry drive, which would include maybe a 35, 40 yard run, and he's on the sideline, he's gassed, does that just kind of preclude him then from the defense the next series? He's just not coming back out. I mean, it could. I mean, we just got to ask him, you know, where he's at on all those things. And I mean, really, these guys are in pretty good shape. So, you know, you're carrying the ball, carrying the ball, get something big, you come over, catch your breath. You know, the whole thing is guys, guys will get tired. It's all about how fast you can recover, catch your breath, and let's go if we're in shape like we semi think we are. Have you, have you ever had in your career, either on your team or been around a player, a situation like this where he's a star defensive player and all of a sudden he's your star running back and he's no longer the star defensive guy that he was, at least not as frequently. Have you ever been around something like this? Yeah, I, I don't think I've been around a good, as good of a football player. Um, that's what he is. Um, he's just a really special football player. And, you know, there's really good running backs out there and there's really good linebackers out there. And he's really good at all of them. And there's probably guys that are, you know, that are out there, but they just, you know, they got depth or whatever. And so they don't need them on both sides. And I mean, I think it's kind of fun. I think it's kind of cool for Shaq. I think it's cool for our team. I think it's good for, you know, even recruiting. I mean, there's a lot of really good high school players that play two ways. And if they're good enough, we'll play you two ways. I mean, we'll figure out how to maximize your talents and, and, and how you can help the team the best. Do you have any thoughts on Brett Hundley as a passer as well as a runner? He's, he's good. He's good. I mean, there's all, all, the, all the talk about him. You know, it's the first time you get a chance to really study him. And he's, uh, you know, he can throw a strong arm, all those things. And then he's... Equally, if not more dangerous, even as a runner. And that's what, that's what makes him really, really hard. You can cover their guys or get some pressure on him, and there he goes. I mean, that's, that's always so frustrating as a defensive coach. Can you talk about what Hawley Kakaha's been able to do this year and, and how he's been able to do it? Plays hard. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of pressure on that QB. And, you know, I think uh, he, he's done a great job. I really think our D line has is, is done a nice job. I think one of the guys that's really, really, um, I think there's a couple guys that are underrated. I mean, Howley's kind of the sack master, and, you know, Danny Shelton's got some, some good love in there for the appropriate reasons. But I think, uh, you know, Andrew Hudson is playing as well as we've seen him play. He comes to work every day. Every detail matters to that guy, and it shows up on Saturday. I mean, he just goes hard. Evan Hudson, you know, is the other guy next to those guys, and everybody wants to talk about everybody else. I mean, that guy's probably as tough as they come. I mean, he he rolled his ankle. You can see it on tape. I mean, it is ugly. And that guy missed about two plays. And it wasn't one of those rolls where it didn't swell up. It was all of that. And, and he didn't limp around. I mean, he, he's 
I mean, I think all those guys are really doing a nice job. I mean, how old he's gets to the quarterback more than all of them, but I think they all work pretty well together. You okay, Evan? I think so. What did you see on film from Siler, and how's he coming along just in terms of actually just being a quarterback with progressions and reads and checkdowns and all of that? He's coming along, you know. I mean, he's making some progress, and uh, there's always a couple in there that you just really want him to, to hit and get. And then there's some things that are that are pretty nice. You're like, okay, that's that's good. That's progress, um, and that's all we can ask. And that's just how it is. You know, it's just going to be: Are we making some progress? Did he learn from last week? Did he get better in practice? And I feel like we, you know, we think he's, you know, he can still he can get better. He can make us better when that passing game gets better. You know, it's going to help everything. We're running the ball, you know, fairly effectively. But the past games, what needs to get better? In the course of a game, you, you have a game plan together kind of going in, and you hit some of those big plays, defensively, offensively, and so on. Does that change give you a little more confidence as a play caller to open things up a little more and certain things start working better than they were? A absolutely. I mean, when, when the stuff you got in the game plan starts hitting and creating some, some momentum, it gives everybody confidence. You know, we're, we're doing some things. And, uh, you know, I think the, the better team you play, the margin for error is, is so close. And that's one of the things I think our guys need to continually understand that, you know, open against a good UCLA team, you know, is going to be very, very small. And you got you to throw an accurate pass, and the receiver's got to make a tough catch. And, and that's good, and that's accurate, and that's, that's how it's going to be. It's not going to be like practice where guys are running open and open by three yards. I mean, that's, that's not realistic. And so that's the mentality that we got to get in terms of making plays. You may have already been asked this. If you did, I apologize. Uh, Wayne and LeVon, just status for those guys. Yeah, they're good to go. Um, they're good to go. Um, I think it's been good because they haven't gotten many reps the last couple weeks, and they were out there and running around pretty good. So with Shaq then at tailback, it's not a matter of him being needed because of injury. It's a matter of him just being the best guy you've got at that position. Yeah, I think so at this point. And it'll be, I am anxious to get those other guys back in there. And, um, you know, I mean, it's been nice to be able to get some explosive runs. And if we can get some more explosive passes, then it's going to help, you know, our point production. Uh, John Ross hasn't had a lot of targets or touches in the last two weeks. How do you cut it? Yeah, and so, you know, I mean, we're always trying to figure those things out, whether it's Case and John Ross. I mean, uh, and so a lot of it comes to practice. You know, those guys that are practicing well and showing up. I mean, I think one guy that's done a, you know, a really good job over the last few weeks and is finally starting to show up is Dante Pettis. Practices hard, you know, makes plays in practice, all of a sudden starts to translate into the game. And, uh, so we just, you know, keep working those guys, and hopefully we can get some things done. Of course, uh, Darrell Daniels is another player. Like the last couple games, hasn't participated. He's, what's his status? And he's he's okay. He he's had, uh, you know, I think one week he's kind of he's kind of had a, you know, a tight back. Nothing real serious, but I think, uh, you know, you got a guy. What happens is that you put the next guy in, you know, Josh Perkins. And Harvey and those guys, and they go and they get the reps. And the guys that get the reps, they play in the games unless something happens. And so you got to kind of, you got to kind of work your way back. And or, or you know, nobody loses a spot because of an injury, but you got to be able to show up and practice, and go. Okay, there he is. You know, he's ready to roll. You mentioned Dante Pettis. What is what did you see out of him on Saturday? Was it just? Hey, he's working hard, and it was kind of a breakthrough, or is it you felt like it was inevitable? What, what have you seen from well, him? Well, I think. I think in the punt, the, the punt return that he got, you know, we caught him with a good call. I think we got him kind of all condensed. The guys did a nice job forming a wall, and you know, he's the benef beneficiary of that uh, that nice wall. But he's getting more confident, you know, fielding the ball and trying to look to make some things happen. But I just think at the receiver position, he's just he's not thinking quite as much. And when those guys can play fast and react, it helps. As a depth in the uh, play of your linebackers. Uh, and what's allowed you to continue to keep Shaq on the offensive side as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, when you take a guy like him out of there, you, you start getting nervous because 
nobody has enough depth. But we do have some decent players in there. And But you take Shaq out of there, now, now we're thin, and some guys are doubling up different positions, and it kind of waters things down. So it's not just as easy as taking a guy out and going, hey, we're good. It does make that position a little bit more vulnerable. You know, all those linebackers play on special teams. And so they're getting more reps there. They're getting more reps on defense. And it's just not as easy as, you know, people make, hey, Shaq's a running back, and we're all good. And, I mean, there's a lot of things going on pretty good on defense to allow that to happen out of those linebacker guys. Talk a little bit about what you've seen from Keyshawn Bieria over the last few weeks. I think he's progressing, you know, redshirt freshman. I think he's playing hard. I think he really cares. Um, and, you know, he's one of those guys that it's fun to watch him play and see how, how hard he goes. And, again, we're using him on special teams a lot. And that has an effect. You know, it does when those guys get their, their reps increased. And so I think he's, he's progressing. Um, he's a fun guy to watch because he's young and you, and you like to watch progression. Guys, you know, when you can really see it, like, okay, this guy's getting better. And I think that's what he's doing. Cross paths much with Jim Mora professionally, and did you know you have his dream job? <laughs> um, no, I don't. Uh, you know, I met him. Uh, I think I might have met him for the first time uh, this year, and uh, you know, some of the meetings we had, and, and that's it. Yeah. Chris, just back to what you said about Ross and, and practice. I just want to make sure I heard you right. So, I mean, is, is he not giving the effort in practice that you want to no, see? Nothing with, with that. Um, you know, John had been banged up a little bit over the, the couple of weeks and those type of things. And so, you know, we just always go back to when guys can practice full speed and practice hard and all those things. It will show up eventually. And whether it's our running backs, you know, or our tight end we're talking about, I mean, that's part of the game. You're going to have to play when you're a little bit banged up and hurt. But, you know, if you can't practice to improve and you're not, you know, it, it usually shows up. And so, I mean, I think there's some of, some of those things going on at, you know, at, at a lot of positions. But that's, I mean, how many games we played now? I mean, that's, that's where we are. And this is like the tough part of the season. This is where the tough guys, you know, tough guys show up. Yeah, you talk about hard for those guys who are to expand on that in general. Guy's hurt, he's coming back, he's getting better. And mentally, he wants to get ready for that game. And as a coach, you've got to have him playing full speed Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Is that a challenge sometimes for some? It's really a challenge. I mean, because it's hard to practice, let alone practice when you're not 100%. And some guys are better at it than others. And those that can be better at it, you know, I mean, it's just, it shows up on game day. If you don't take a lot of reps and all those things, I mean, we just, I just don't believe in those guys that, hey, uh, you know, I'm a gamer. Just get me to the game. And I know guys can have a good game and those rare things happen, but that, that's, that's rare. The guys that can, you know, have a little fortune and stay healthy and those guys that can have a lot of toughness and work through hurts. Um, and some guys are injured, and we always make a difference between that. I mean, when you're injured, you can't go. You're really going to hurt your team. You're going to hurt yourself. You might set yourself back. And so that's why we got a great medical staff to really kind of differentiate between, you know, he, he needs to slow down. He needs to not go. We need to get him healed up. But I think at this point, if you're playing all healthy, you ought to go to Las Vegas and let it ride because you just got a lot of luck on your side at this point. Coach, you talk, you know, about bankable reps and – you know, with all of your new processes and everything you're implementing new and what your expectations are for practice, are guys still adjusting, you know, and trying to figure out adjustments of what you expect? A absolutely. They're not going to get it like in, you know, two months. I mean, it's, they're adjusting. And so not only adjusting to that, but, but getting better in practice and playing against good teams, it's just really hard. I mean, all this is hard work. It's just not going to happen in one week. And so, you know, you take a team that's, you know, been together for a handful of years and you have your way of doing things and the kids get it and all that, it's still hard to go out there and practice and get better and win games. And let, a no, let alone when we're still like figuring some things out. And, you know, it's so competitive. I mean, everybody's got good coaches. Everybody's got really good players. And so you're splitting hairs and all this, all this stuff matters. Chris, do you feel like you've made progress? I think we're making progress. I think it's one step, you know, 
two steps forward, one step back. I feel like that, um, and it's it's hard and it's frustrating. And I think you talk to anybody that's that's new, uh, it is not unique. It's not unique to us. But I appreciate the kids. You know, I appreciate that they're working hard. Um, I appreciate that they're trying. Um, and and I think we are making progress. Oh, I'm sorry. With, with Shaq playing a little defense this week, as you, as you said, was that something that he asked to do, or was that is this more game plan related? No, I mean, I, I know. I, I don't know. I, I think I was going to say I think Shaq's a defensive guy at heart, but I, I'm not really sure of that. I think he's played over there a long time, so that's where he feels his home is. And, you know, he's played with a lot of those guys for a lot of years, and so he likes to be out there. But I know he likes carrying the ball and doing that as well. And... Um, you know, he's a good player, and so however we can get him on the field as much as we can, we want to do. Chris, this is going back to two weeks ago, but <clears throat> did you ever get any explanation from the league on the running into the punter penalty on the block? Um, so they said it was hard to see on the, uh, on the tape whether, whether he blocked the ball, because if he blocks the ball, there's no running into the – and so that's what they didn't see. The explanation we got. That's the question you asked. Chris, when you look at UCLA's game against Arizona last Saturday, yeah. what, what showed up on tape, especially on defense that maybe hadn't shown up up to that point? For who? For who? For UCLA. I think UCLA is really good. I mean, it's, you know, again, you watch these teams from afar and you watch them on TV. Like I watch them a little bit, I get to see a little here and there. And then you put them on and study them and you're like, okay. And that's what it is. These guys are really good. They play. They're athletic. They're physical. They know exactly what they're doing. There's no guy out there. Um, and they're young. You know, they got young guys. And so, you know, their rankings and all those things are completely legit. Um, this is one of the better teams, without question, that we put the tape on. And you go, okay, these guys are good. Was there something that showed up in that particular game that maybe – because they were kind of, it's been kind of a mixed bag for them until – Last weekend. Yeah, know? and so, you know, you go back and watch – you watch a few of their games and you watch teams progressing and getting better, and that's what I saw. And I saw guys playing really, really hard with a lot of energy and urgency. It, it was impressive. Chris, the TV cameras caught Mora having an altercation, a verbal altercation with one of his assistants a couple of weeks ago on the sidelines. Uh, the sidelines are very emotional, very oh, intense. Yeah. How do you check yourself from having that happen? It's oh. hard. I mean, it's just an emotional game, you know, and it's so painful because, um, you know, whether it's on camera or whatever, it, it is so emotional down there. And, uh, you know, you put so much into it and, you know, you're trying to do the right thing and, you know, get things right and, you know, emotions are high and it's, uh, it's, hard, to, it's hard to keep it even keel. It really is. How do you check yourself? Um, Trust me, I don't, I don't even kind of feel like I look half the time. Now, I don't really know how I look, but, I mean, I feel like crying and screaming and throwing tantrum and falling down on the ground. I mean, that's what I'd really like to do. And it's painful not to do all that stuff. It really is. I mean, it, it, it takes a lot, of, uh, a lot of energy just to stand there and catch your breath and, you know, and, yeah, and try to, if you're going to say something, you know, try to say something constructive, which uh, I think if you probably asked our coaches, you know, I got a lot, of, a lot of work to do on that one myself. Were you ever like that earlier in your career? I mean, you've always seemed to be a pretty even keel guy, but the temper tantrum throwing guy, were you yeah. ever like that early? I mean, like I said, all I can tell you is, um, you know, how it looks is not how I feel, not even kind of. And it's, uh, you know, if we, we want our players to, you know, act a certain way, and so, you know, I think our players are challenged in so many ways when we play the game. I think me as a coach is, is challenged very much when we play the game. I mean, tremendously. I mean, every been doing this a long time, and every Saturday you go out there. Every day of practice, you're challenged to, like, you know, really be good and really be a, a teacher and an educator and a professor, you know, all those things. And it's, it's hard. What do you think of face paint as a motivational technique? As what? Face paint. Yeah, we, we've done it. We, you know, I mean, no, nah, I don't know about that. I mean, I, I know this. You know, it, you're always trying to, 
Like I always think we're trying to educate our guys. Like I, I, I want to educate the guys. And when you want to motivate them but mo and motivate them like, you know, and, and sometimes it's in fun ways. Sometimes it's, you know, imagery, it's whatever. And so, hey, whatever works, you know, I mean, you just got to gauge your team. And, and if that, you know, fires guys up, I mean, we've, we've done that in the, in the past ourselves. And the kids get into it. I mean, do they get into it? Do they buy in? Are they in on it? They are. You go. Did you win? We did. Chris, you guys are, are winless against ranked teams this year. Another one coming up now. Yeah. What is it going to take for you guys to, to take down one of these top two? Yeah, we're, we're going to have to play, you know, a really – you have to play a really good, clean game. And we haven't done that. You know, we haven't done that. We've turned the ball over too much. Um, you know, we haven't had hit enough big, big plays, you know, those type of things. And that's, that's what has to happen. You're not going to be able to go over there and play average football and beat one of these ranked teams. And they're ranked, and especially this late into the season, you know, they're ranked for a reason. You know, early on it can be polls and all this kind of stuff. But when you get this late in the season, guys are earning things, and it's showing up on tape. And so for us to, to beat a really good team, we have to play really good, consistent football. It can't be, you know, three quarters of a game. That was pretty good. But we had these handful of plays that really killed us. You're not going to beat a team like this. Kind of a tale of two halves for your defense on Saturday. What did you see adjustment-wise or maybe just energy-wise from the defense in the second half that kind of flipped the script? There? Yeah. You know, I thought, I thought what was good on defense is we got some turnovers, you know. I think we got three on defense, one on special teams, scored. I mean, I thought all that was awesome. Uh, did I think there were some times where we tackled very poorly that we need to play with more passion and emotion? No doubt about it. And I think our guys would tell you that as well. And that goes back to that consistency that we're talking about right there. You know, we do that, you know, this week. Won't be good. The poor tackling seems to be something you're bringing up after every game. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that and what what needs to be done? So um, it's fundamental of football and really hard to do. I mean, you show me a good offense, I'm going to show you a lot of missed tackles. So part of that is they got good players in space. That's what this game's all about. So it's not going to all be clean. Guys are going to break tackles. But I look at it as are we running to the ball and helping the guy that's singled up out there. So if he does miss, we slowed him down and somebody else can make the tackle. You know, everybody's going to miss tackles the better, more efficient we can get at it. You know, that's what we're talking about. Is it harder to coach that during the season than it was 10, 20 years ago where you've really got to watch the, the collision and the wear yeah. and tear on players? Yeah, I think we're, we're a little bit wiser, and I think there's a fine line there. And I think it's way more delicate and complicated than, I don't know, maybe some people have figured out but I, I know because it's like, you know, you're, you're nervous about getting guys bang, banged up at all times, let alone losing them in practice. But if you don't go hard and, and practice, you, you know, what are we talking about here? You know, you, you got to get better. And so there's no staying the same. There's just not. There's not in life and there's not in football. You're either getting better or you're going down. There's no staying the same. And so that's obviously, you know, something that we, it's a fundamental. It's day one fundamental. And so we got to do a better job of, run into the ball, wrapping guys up, and we got to practice that. There's all this talk about Shaq and running back. How about John Ross and corner? Was that? So, you know, we're always experimenting. We'll, we'll always try to move guys around. If somebody can help us on the other side of the ball, if somebody's being, you know, uh, can make more of an impact. And like I said, if we can play a guy two ways, I mean, we'll do that. So we're always experimenting and just seeing, you know, is there something more to getting explosive guys on the field and seeing if they can help us. A couple of times by a few different national outlets, Shaq is kind of a dark horse fringe Heisman candidate. Do you have any thought on that? So I, I think I'd go back to ask you guys because you guys are the guys that you know do this stuff. What what is the Heisman Trophy winner? I mean, what, what is he? I mean, I, someone help me with that, and then I can answer your question. In theory, the best college football player in the country. In okay. theory. So theory, can you take that out, or is that what it is? <laughs> it depends on how you approach it. <laughs> hey, I don't get a chance to watch everybody around the country, but I do see a lot, and I haven't seen a better football player out there than that guy. A better flat-out football player. Your words, the best football player in college football. 
And I haven't seen, you know, there might be somebody that's the same and all those type of things. But a football player, I mean, I know there's some good ones out there, but what this guy does in terms of special teams and offense and defense and all those things, I haven't seen a better one. What's UCLA's real strengths? I think the easier way to answer that question is I really don't see a bunch of weakness. I think that's their strength. They don't have, well, they're, you know, this guy's a, a true, you know, they play a couple true freshmen, I think, but they're good. I mean, they're, they're good. And I think that's their, you know, their strength is they don't really have, you know, all this, you know, a position group that that's the little bit of their Achilles heel. I, they put the defense on and they fly around and we know about their offense and their quarterback and, um, you know, they do the same thing with Miles Jack and move him around. They get good players on the field as much as they can. And, I mean, I'm, a, I, I'm really, really impressed with this program, with this team. Bases on the offensive line, you had to do a lot of shuffling on Saturday. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's usually how it goes in the old line, you know. I mean, those guys are banging every single play. And, um, you know, we move guys around even earlier in the season than this just to make sure that we can – crossbreed and all those type of things and tackles to guards and guards to center. And so if you get a guy dinged, it's not like, oh, my stars, what are we doing now? And, uh, you know, James the toe got kicked out to tackle. He's played a little bit there before, and I think he did a really nice job, you know, of, of his natural position is probably inside, but he, he, he battled and did a good job. Dexter going to be back? Dexter should be. Um, you know, I think he's, you know, same old, same old. I mean, he practiced a little bit last week, and so he should be you know, much better this week, and we'll see. Is Reva more long-term? I mean, is there any hope? He's getting closer. Um, he's not this week. But uh, we were hoping that we're going to have him before the season's out. I mean, yeah. As far as schemes and tendencies and so on, UCLA, quality of player side, UCLA do anything really unusual that you think your guys probably haven't seen this year? Is it yeah, you know, this late in the season, you've kind of seen a lot of things. Now, certain teams, you know, everybody, the good teams, you know, have their core schemes, and uh, that's what they do well, and they have enough wrinkles around it to keep you off balance. So I wouldn't say it's something that we haven't seen. They just do it really well with fast guys that are good athletes. I mean, that's the thing that really shows up. You talked about two steps forward, one step back. Yeah. Is this kind of where you thought after nine games the team would be? Are they behind progress, ahead of progress, kind of right where you thought they'd be? I don't really ever make those predictions. You know, I just don't really – I mean, I think you're always just trying to, like, are we playing well? Are we playing to our potential? And are we really, like, all in and just everything we got? I mean, those are the questions that we're always looking at and answering. And to all those things, I think it is two steps forward and one step back. Whether I thought we'd be, you know, here or not, I mean, I think as a coach, you're always pushy. You're always expecting more. You always have high standards. You always want it to be perfect, knowing that it's not going to be perfect, but hopefully it's at a real high level. And so hard for me to really answer that question and, you know, say, did I predict this? I know we're itchy to be better. I know that. Thanks, everyone. Okay.